have Mark Ramsey beside me is the one, the only, Tracy Johnson. I'm so excited, Tracy. I've been wanting to do this with you for like a zillion years, so I'm so excited we could finally do this. And we have a context, which is really cool, because you, among other things, have written uh, uh, now a total of three books on Morning Radio, right? Yes, that's right. This is the third. This is the third, Morning Radio Revisited, and it's subtitled A Guide to Developing On-Air Superstars. Tracy, as you probably know, is a, uh, an infamous, infamous name in radio circles, as well as a coach and a consultant and author now of three morning show books. And yeah, Tracy, on this particular book, now this is the third one deep, um, but this one is by far the smallest of the three. I got better. <laughs> um, <laughs> you really boiled it down, right? Well, who was it that uh, said I apologize for the length of this letter because I didn't have time to write a short one? <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened here. This started out uh, at about 350 pages, and wow. through the process of going through all of the edits and the rewrites and focusing the material, uh, it kept getting better and better the shorter I made it, and it got down to about 110 pages before I was happy with the product. Well, it is. This is a, a terrific read, first of all. It's everything you need to know and nothing else, which is what's great about the length of it. Um, uh, you have a it's also a lesson to talent, right? To edit their material well, and focus. In. This is what I'm going <laughs> to ask you, which is, you know, the guide to developing on your superstars. Now, what are the things that, in your view, are most critical? You've got before you answer that, you've got in this note that you included, um, you've got um, uh, basically the categories that you've got are help on our personalities, talent coaches and program directors understand and target an audience, design a strategy to appeal to them create relatable characters, manage on-air roles, appeal to listeners on an emotional level, and much more. Among all those things, what's most important? If I'm a struggling talent in Tulsa, what's most important for me to get my head around? Well, I think it's a process, Mark. Uh, and I look at it in five steps. It starts with really having a deep understanding and appreciation for the listening environment and who the audience is, and getting to know them deeply and intimately. And not just knowing that they're a 37-year-old female with two kids who uh, work two jobs and uh, have a busy life. That's really on the surface. It's getting deeper than that. So the first step is really understanding the audience and how they're using the radio. And the second is creating content that fits into their lifestyle. Because they're not going to change what they do to fit yours and to come into your world. So you have to figure out how you can get into theirs and create relatable content that resonates with them in a unique and meaningful way. And then the third step is creating character and roles that allow you to shine your personality through the content to connect with the audience, and then injecting that with emotion and passion to create remarkable moments that they can, uh, that they can latch onto and become passionate about, and then taking that to the streets and promoting it, marketing it, positioning it, and evaluating it so you're constantly innovating and creating something new. So I look at it as five steps. I don't know which is more important than the other. I think they all are interrelated, uh, and I think it's all a process in becoming a dynamic, difference-making personality. Well, th that's a great list of steps. My, my you know, I, as I listen to those, I'm a little overwhelmed, and I'm wondering if you. And again, that's what the book is for, obviously. But uh, but if you take it back to the beginning of that process, and you have that first sit down of two hours with the morning show, let's say, um, you know, what are the to dos for me? On day one, what are the to-dos? What, what, how do I get the process started? Understand your listener. Uh, I did a great uh, session with a, uh, a group of morning shows a couple of weeks ago that uh, I asked them, who's your, who's your audience? And it was a classic rock station. Mm -hmm. And they said, it's a 40-year-old guy who's got kids and he's married and he wishes he was still in high school driving his hot car and playing uh, the guitar in his garage. I said, okay, that's great. What's his life like? What does he do every day? What's it like to be him for a week? Mm -hmm. What does he worry about? What keeps him up at night? And we got really deep into the consciousness and the profile of what that 40-year-old classic rock listener is all about. And one of the things that emerged from that is, well, he's probably got kids. Maybe he's got a son who's 10 or 12 or 13 or 14, and that kid is starting to take on a personality and a life of his own, and they're starting to grow apart. And he's worried about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so where we ended up is how can we put together content and put the personalities in a position where they're leading a tribe of similarly minded dads who are going through that same thing. We ended up with a promotion that would uh, have you tell us what your son is all about, tell us what you, what's going on in your life, 
what your son is passionate about, and we'll send you on a father-son trip to reconnect through something that your son mm -hmm. is passionate about. They're passionate about hockey. We'll send you, uh, get you on the ice and backstage at, uh, at a hockey game. So it's really connecting with the emotions that are going on in those listeners' lives and really becoming a part of that in a deeper way than listen to be caller number nine and win tickets to go see uh, uh, a concert. It's also a deeper way than say, you know, here's a comedy service, let me read the one-liners. Yeah, or the next uh, 20 minutes we'll do uh, Hollywood gossip and Battle of the Sexes uh, coming up. It's really getting to know the audience and, and getting to know them so well that you can inject your personality into the content that compels them and, and appeals to them. What are the things that the average morning show does Poorly that the great morning shows do so well. What's the what are some of the main differences? I know you've touched on some, but what are some of the other main differences between those two? If I want to get from here to there, it, you it, you can coach a morning show and help them improve from point A to point B by going over air checks and critiquing and improving the process and tightening some things up. That's not too hard to do. Mm -hmm. Most shows can do that. Getting from point B to point C is where they really want to be. And that requires getting over some hurdles and connecting with the audience on an emotional level. Mm -hmm. And that's difficult because talent is, is wary. In order to um, connect emotionally, you have to make yourself vulnerable. You have to take some risks. And talent has been taught not to take risks because they've been punished when they take risks and fail. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't worked out for them. So uh, that's the biggest step. Um, I worked with Jeff and Jer for many years, and if you listen to Jeff and Jer, if you know much about Jeff and Jer, the first thing that you would say about them is that they're really funny. They're funny, they get along well together, all of those things are true. But what makes Jeff and Jer what they are to the community in San Diego is that they care about the community and they know how to be really good when things are really bad. Mm -hmm. They are community cheerleaders and they really can, can bring everyone together on a deep and emotional level and they can tell stories through that. And it's, it's being very relatable. The other thing that, uh, that, that great talent is able to do is to relate stories and, in, and um, communicate characteristics about themselves without sounding as if they're self-indulged, self-possessed, and arrogant. It's a big difference in talking about yourself and talking about things that happen to you. Mm -hmm. There's a real fine line between the two. It's kind of like being the, um, uh, the interesting, charismatic guy at the party that uh, attracts attention as opposed to be the fat, sweaty guy that chases you around and wants to show you pictures of his vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, and the great talent knows how to relate characteristics about themselves without making it sound self-indulgent. Mm -hmm. What is the secret to that? Being a great storyteller. And, really? keep, and, and uh, being a great storyteller and keeping in mind uh, the listening environment and understanding, having a deep understanding that the audience is listening to get something from you, not so you can give them something. Uh, explain that to me. If you listen to most radio stations, whether it's personalities or morning shows or promos that you hear on the air, you hear the big booming voice come on and say, we're the big 1290, the station that gives you, we want to send you to. And the listener's going, I don't care what you want to do. I listen to you to get put into a mood so I can benefit from it, so you can provide value, meaning, interpretation, and context into my life. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing you a favor by listening to you so you can feel good about giving me something. So in a sense you're saying, I want you, the audience is saying, I want you to pull me, not push me. Yes, make something available to me. Yeah, don't try to sell me something. Mm -hmm. Provide something I want to buy. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, you know, I think most radio stations are still stuck in that mentality of trying to be big and impose themselves on an audience. And the audience isn't buying that presentation. Not in this day and age. Um, last question. If I'm a broadcaster, you know, we always get these questions, help me find a morning show, help me find a morning show. If I'm looking for talent, what, sometimes talent's hard to find, right? You can buy it off the rack at a high price, but if you're looking for something organic bubbling up from the bottom, what are the characteristics, what are the things you need to look for? I think in, in evaluating talent, a lot of times we try to listen to air checks of personalities and project how they sound right now into how our station sounds right now. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard thing to do. Um, 
you have to train yourself to listen for entertaining, charismatic personalities and then teach them how you want to package, promote, and position themselves to be on your station, to be on the air. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole different process. It's easier to take entertaining people and teach them how to be on the radio than it is to take radio people and teach them how to be entertaining. And a lot of times we get that backwards. We look mm -hmm. for people who are technically perfect, who know how to run a board, who know how to be tight, they know how to execute the formatics, they know how to uh, promote that upcoming uh, concert or event. And we miss the entertainment part. And the entertainment part is the biggest part of the equation. Now, I know you're not saying, hey, go to the comedy club, find someone who's funny, and you can teach them radio, right? That's a stand-up comedy is an entirely different skill set. That's someone who can work a live crowd, who can deliver a routine night after night after night, and mm -hmm. usually it's the same one, and they might have a tight 20. <laughs> but, but you're not doing a tight that 20. That would be four hours every right? day, five days a week. A, there's a big difference to that, which doesn't mean that comedians can't work on the air. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, but I, I, think, I think talent is everywhere. Uh, I think there's talent in podcasts, I think there's talent in um, some people who are driving taxis and bussing tables. And why don't we, Tracy, why don't we do a better job of finding the talent that's right under our noses? You know I made a big fuss about the whole Adam Carolla announcement with AOL because that was radios to take or lose and radio lost it. Why don't we look right out in the open air where the talent is? Having been out of day-to-day -day radio for the past four years, I got a whole different perspective and appreciation for uh, how the broadcast industry uh, operates. And when you're in it day-to-day, -day, you tend to close yourself off from the rest of the world, and you see things differently. Uh, getting out into the real world, you have a different perspective, and you're able to see those opportunities that those of us in radio, uh, on a daily basis, don't always see. It's perspective. Perspective. The awesome Tracy Johnson, author of, among other books, Morning Radio Revisited. How can people get this book and how can they connect to you? Uh, you can connect with me at my website and you can get the book at uh, tjohnsonmedia.com and also check out my blog. It's at personalityradio.wordpress.com. Tracy, thank you. Thanks, Mark.